Today we have a fairly straightforward topic. It is to evaluate reverse Polish notation. Reverse Polish notation. So what does this mean? How does this relate to what we've always known, right? So whenever we have arithmetic expressions, there's different ways we can express them. There's not just one way to express it. There is postfix notation, where we have the operate, we have the numbers and then the operator. Notice how it says post postfix afterwards. This reminds me of our traversals, pre-order, in order, and post order. The prefix tells us what kind of traversal it is. So this is related to that. It's, it's basically the same classifications. So when we have infix, what do you see? You see that in. What does that mean? The operator is in between the numbers we're operating on. So we would do three plus four. This is what we've used all our lives. Infix is what you use in math. This is the notation that you're going to use almost always. So this is what we're familiar with. And then we have prefix notation where our operator is before the operands. And we see that it says pre. So what are each of these? Which one of these is Polish? Which one is reverse Polish? So the prefix notation right there, that is Polish notation. And when you reverse prefix notation, you get postfix notation. And this is reverse Polish notation. So this is reverse Polish notation. And our job in this question is to evaluate this. What is three plus four? Three plus four is seven. All of these are saying the same thing in different expressions of the arithmetic operators. So what we need to do is we need to solve this just like we would solve this. But how, how do we solve that? Does, does that mean, like, how would we go about this? So why don't we bring this guy down and just take a look at him and see, see what, what is it really saying? Okay, so we're getting very rudimentary here. We're returning back to the basics. So before you saw this was the same thing as three plus four, which is seven. So how do I get the same result from this? So all we need to know are the fundamental things in a expression where it's arranged like this is we need two operands. So our operands are right there, are three and four. And what comes after it tells us what we're going to do to apply to both of these. How are we going to do a certain uh, operation on these? And our operation sits right there. So basically this notation just rearranges things. All it says is our first operand is three, my second operand is four, and I'm going to do a addition between them in respective order. So what this means is we know that this expression is the same thing as three plus four, except we're just rearranging things differently. So what happens when I throw something in that is going to confuse us? Okay, so I just threw in a two and a multiplication symbol, but this should not confuse us. When we read this expression, we read it from left, to right. What we're going to do is we're going to treat this just like I just said, we're going to go from left to right. And we're going to see once my requirements are fulfilled, I execute an operation. So why don't why don't we do that? Why don't we start reaping from left to right? So I have an operand, there's one. And then I have another operand, there's two. And then I keep scanning. And then I see an operation. As soon as I see an operation, I execute it. I have the operands I need, I have the operation. So what I do is three plus four is what? Three plus four is seven. Okay, and now we have a seven. And do you see as soon as my requirements were fulfilled, I immediately executed the expression and I yielded an answer. So we just continue scanning. And now I need to fulfill my requirements again. Now I need two operands and an operator. So let's get an operand, the seven, and then we see another operand, the two, and then we see an operation and we immediately execute it. So seven times two is 14. And that is the answer to this expression. So anyway, we can just cut to the chase. So this is a stack problem. This is very similar to the balance parentheses problem right there. And it's basically just a problem that you should just know. I mean, it's something that can come intuitively, like we can see that and deduce it, but it's just so well known that it's a stack problem that 
we just know it's a stack problem. So we're going to do a walkthrough with an expression and using a stack and see how we evaluate it. And if we see that, then it's fairly easy to go to the code. And the code is in the description as always, it's always in the description um, for this problem. So let's get our stack and let's get an expression. Okay, so we have our expression, we have our stack. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna proceed like we did before. We're going to push our operands, and as soon as we see an operation, pop two items, evaluate, and then push them back on the stack. So what we're going to do is I see a three, I push it on the stack. I see a four, I push it on the stack. And then I see an operator, and then I need to execute that operator. So let's remove the operator. And now I need to pop two items and apply it. So I pop the four and I pop the three. Okay, and now we have them to operate on. Three plus four is seven. So I push seven onto the stack. Okay, so now seven is on the stack. So all we're doing is formalizing this into a data structure. What we were doing before, we're now doing with a stack. So we have the seven now, and now we see the two. Is the two an operand or an operator? The two is an operand, so we're going to push the two onto the stack. And now we have a multiplication symbol. Pull both items out and now apply the operation. Seven times two is 14. And now we see an operand, push the one. So now we see a plus sign. So we pop two items and then we apply the operator and now we're going to get 15 and then push that on the stack. And we've ran out of things to go through with operands and operators. So all we do is pop the item that's on the stack, which is the final result. So our final result is going to be 15. 15 is the final answer to this reverse Polish notation expression. So what we did was, all we did was, again, formalize what we were doing into a data structure and we got our results. So now let's look at the time and space complexity for this solution. Okay, so if we let the length of the actual expression, which here's an example expression, be n, and we have the number of digits, be d, and the number of operators, be o, then we can take a closer look at the time and space. So what we're going to do in terms of time is we're going to be traversing the whole string or array, however it's represented, and we're going to be pushing items, we're going to be popping items and doing operation. A pushing an item takes constant time, popping an item takes constant time, and performing arithmetic operations takes constant time. So for each one of these things, we're gonna be doing constant time operations n times. So that's going to be n O of n for the time complexity. We bound to the length of the actual expression. So what we're going to do in terms of space is here's an example of a worst case space where we go as high as the amount of digits we have in the actual string or array. So here's an example of one, two, three times times. So we would push the one, push the two, push the three, and then we'd multiply downwards, multiply downwards, and the result is six. So the space complexity in terms of the stack and how we bound space would be O of digits, right? So that's going to be the bound on the number of digits we have. So we have three, oh, it's so hard to say that word. So we have three digits right there. I can't say that word. Oh. So we have three. So for this expression, the value of D is three. We have one, two, three. Um, operands, numbers that we're operating on, and that is going to be how we bound the space because we're going to push them on the stack, right? So that is the time and space complexity for this problem.